Hi. Welcome to how to model a MOSFET and SPICE. Specifically, uh, we're going to try to extract a MOSFET model using the data sheet. Uh, as a practicing engineer, uh, there are many times where you are specified uh, or you select the MOSFET but the manufacturer will not have a MOSFET uh, model. So there are ways of using the data sheet to extract some of the parameters. And uh, I'm going to show some of the techniques. Okay, And one of the reasons would be you don't have models available from the manufacturer. A second reason may be uh, that, uh, especially in my case, I work on uh, on uh, older technology and some of the uh, older MOSFETs may not be available so we have to use new MOSFETs okay and in many cases they don't have uh, models for that one of the examples was uh, there was a company called Simi South I believe and they had a JFET that I use, which is basically a MOSFET with uh, basically a diode junction, but uh, basically it's the same as the MOSFET. And I use this technique to extract the MOSFET uh, model. Okay, so to start, we'll start with the MOSFET equation. Okay, and this is the MOSFET equation, which is the current times W, W is the width of the MOSFET, KP is the transconductance parameter, and then you have a constant 2, and then L, L is the length of the MOSFET, okay, and then you have VGS, and then this VT is the threshold voltage, okay, and all of that is, or at least the VGS minus VT is, is squared, okay. And to model, basically you need two parameters. You need the VT and you need the KP. Basically that one and these two parameters, okay. So since you have two unknowns, then you need two equations, okay. So what we do is, uh, Looking back at, let me expand this a little bit. Looking at this equation, if you were to plot this equation, you'll get a family of curves that look like this. You'll have a VGS1, VGS2, and so forth. Okay, so you'll have a family of curves. And at, if you use a curve tracer uh, to measure your MOSFETs, you'll get a family of curves like that. So this is available most of the time from your data sheet. Okay, and if you don't, you can get it from a curve tracer. Tracer. Okay, so as long as you have a, a some kind of a family of curves, then what you want to do is you want to get two plots, you know, or uh, you want to use two of these. Uh, curves you want to use one that it as is at the lower current basically this is IDS this is the current from drain to source and then this is VGS or VDS okay so you want to use one of your lower ones and then you want to use one that's uh, one of your higher ones okay so we pick two parameters we can call this ID1 Okay, and where it intercepts here, that would be your ID1, and this would be your uh, VDS, and then the, the voltage that you uh, set up from gate to source, that would be your other. So basically you want this and this parameter, okay. And then of course you have IDS2 and then 
the, your second VGS voltage. So once you have those two points, you get two equations. Okay, you get this equation, this equation, and what you do is you solve for KP. Okay, once you have for KP, you can set them equal to each other. Okay, and basically once we've done that, we've eliminated KP. And what you want to do is you want to solve for VT. Uh, what you get is you end up with a quadratic equation, and it's it's a very tedious. Uh, what I did is I went ahead and actually put this equation into MathCat and did the symbolic uh, equation or solver, and I end up with this equation. Basically, did the same thing. So now that once you know what VT is, then you can plug VT into the two equations or the one equation and you can solve for KP. So you have these two equations and with those equations, two equations, then all you need to do is get these variables which is VGS1, IDS1, and VGS2, IDS2. So these would be your input parameter. Okay. So the data sheet or the MOSFET that I will be using is a IRF 624. Okay, there is a spice model, but I just want to, since it's a common one, I wanted to do that. And we'll see that on their curves, this first curve is when you put a VGS of 4.5, so you get a certain current. Okay, so that would be my IDS1, and then it jumps to 5, 5.5 and, and 6, and at 6, select that point, and that would be our IDS2, okay? So basically, we've got to get that current. This voltage we know is 4.5, VGS2 is 6 volts, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the data sheet, see if we can extract that. Okay. And here is the plot. Okay, so this is with a VGS of uh, 4.5, and this would be 1 milliamp, no, 100 milliamps, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's approximately 6, 600 milliamps. So let me go back to that. So this would be 600 milliamps. Okay. And then if I go here, this would be 5, 5 and a half, 6. Okay. And if you look, this would be 1. So that would be 2. So it's almost 3. Let me see if I got that right. It's 5, 5 and a half, 6. So it's just under. Three. So I would say 2.9 is probably a good estimation. 2.9. So this would be 2.9 amps. Okay. So I come here to my MathCat. Okay. Uh, these are my units, 1 to the negative, negative 12 is pico, nano, micro, and so forth. So here I have a VGS of uh, VGS of 1. So what I'll do is I'll enter that as 4.5. Okay. And the current is supposed to be, I believe, 600. Let me just verify that. 600, yeah. So I've got a 600, and this is supposed to be 6 volts. Okay, and I believe this was 2.9, is the closest that I can get. Okay, so here's my parameters. Okay, so now once I input that, and here's my two equations, VT and KP. 
So basically, by entering those, these two equations will give me the Kp parameter, which is a threshold voltage of 3.24, and we have a Kp of 0.766, and the units are supposed to be uh, amps uh, divided by uh, voltage square, so disregard that. Okay. So now we have that, so what do we do? How do we verify the model? Okay. So come here Let me make this here. Okay. This is a the MOSFET and I define a spice model. Okay. And to define a spice model you have to put a dot model and then you can name uh, the uh, the trans uh, the MOSFET and then you have to put NMOS and since we're using the simplest uh, model you put level equals one which is the simplest model and there's a parameter that uh, a spice parameter that, we, that is often used is called lambda typically uh, this lambda or this parameter determines the output impedance of the MOSFET uh, for modeling purpose just for a first run We'll set it to zero. Okay. So here, the next parameter is VTO. VTO is the threshold voltage. So in the spice, uh, or actually in the MathCAD is 3.24. So we'll change this to 3.4. 3.24. Okay. And then the KP is supposed to be. 0 0.766 okay so we've done that so now uh, let me go back to this and it looks like this is 1 volt 10 volts right 1, 10, so that it would be 100 so we're going to sweep the DC or actually the DC volts across the drain to source to 10 or actually to 100 so we'll go to setup and here's the VDS so we want it to start from 0 and sweep to 100 in 100 mini volts steps and then we want the VGS to start at 4.5 which is the first ID voltage or a VGS voltage and we want it to stop at 6 and we want it to step at 5 or half half a, half a volt okay so we set up let's run and here we have it okay so now as you can tell this is VGS of of uh, 4.5 5 5 and a half and six so this should be approximately 600 volts and it's pretty close 608 okay and, and if you look up here it's pretty close to 2.9 I can get it up there but then uh, I'll take time but it's close to that so basically with these two parameters or forward parameters we're able to extract the DC which is a uh, very close approximation of these uh, of the plot so that's the way to to extract or at least the DC uh, uh, spice parameter now one of the other things that uh, uh, once you've done the DC model you want to extract the parasitics or actually you want to extract uh, the capacitance uh, from the gate to source and the gate to drain which is the Miller cap and the parameters that you're looking for in the data sheet are these parameters you want to look for CISS COSS and CRSS so in this case these are the input capacitance output capacitance and the reverse transfer function uh, capacitance. So it's 260, 77, 
and 15 okay so in that case we go back here I define the, the input the output in the reverse okay and then you have these uh, it's another spice parameter and those are derived from these parameters which are on the data sheet and basically once you have these parameters these are the spice parameters that you will uh, put in your spice model in this case there's a capacitance uh, from the gate to source and it's 2.46 times 10 to the negative 6 so it's microfarads but that the capacitance is actually uh, multiplied times I believe the width and you also have another parameter that will give you the the Miller capacitance that's the capacitance from the gate to the drain and this one is 1.5 to the negative 7 so these parameters these two you want to insert them in your spice model so in this case here you have the CGSO and, and I entered them as 2.4 uh, 2.45 to the negative 6 and so forth so once you have these then you should have the appropriate capacitance from the gate to source and gate to drain okay so how do you check them well you go to the output file okay and if you notice in here in the output file okay uh, the gate to source uh, you happen to have a capacitance of 245 uh, picofarads okay and then the Miller comes out to about 15 picofarads and so forth so with those two statements you're able to define what the parasitics are and basically as long as you have these two capacitance it you pretty much already have both the DC model and the AC model so you're pretty much done so this is a uh, a technique that I've used it has worked fairly well and uh, hopefully you'll be able to use this technique to extract some of your spice uh, parameters thank you for watching